Let's have some fun. Let's compare Apple's all new studio display against Apple's legacy Thunderbolt display. Welcome everybody. Welcome to Apple Insider. You've got me, Andrew O'Hara here, and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss a single video. Now what I've got here for you today are two different displays. Apple's long since discontinued 27 inch Thunderbolt display, as well as Apple's all new 27 inch studio display. Now, even though these things are outdated, no longer available, I still thought this would be fun. So yeah, I'm not recommending you guys go out and buy a Thunderbolt display at this point in time, but hey, it's still a cool comparison between Apple's newest display versus its last generation 27 inch display, which it's been around for quite a while now. So let's go ahead and dive into this, even if it's just for a little bit of fun. Of course, with displays, we gotta talk about the actual panels themselves. So let's go ahead and take a look at what Apple specs were in the Thunderbolt display and how they compared to the all new studio display. So the Thunderbolt display has a 2560 by 1440 panel, which gives it a pixel density at 27 inches of around 108 PPI. Apple basically doubled that here on the 27 inch studio display. It actually has a resolution of 5120 by 2880. And again, at 27 inches, you're looking at 218 PPI. Apple's Thunderbolt display over here, this has a brightness of about 325 nits, which is well below the 600 nit brightness of the all new studio display. Unfortunately, contrast ratios are still pretty similar. The studio display has an unpublished contrast ratio of about 1200 to one, whereas the Thunderbolt display is clocking in at a thousand to one contrast ratio. While Apple officially calls the old display the Thunderbolt display, both of these are, in fact, Thunderbolt displays. They each connect via Thunderbolt to your computer. So if we turn this around, this is the old Thunderbolt display. And we can see we've got two cables in the back. We have the power cable and then a second cable that's for our Thunderbolt. It is split between the Thunderbolt connector as well as a separate MagSafe connector. So even though it's one cable, it splits into two. And you can get up to 85 watts of power using the built-in MagSafe cable. Fortunately, there isn't an adapter yet for the new MacBook Pros, so this guy won't deliver Mac power to the latest generation MagSafe 3 devices. But it still is Thunderbolt, and it powers an array of ports on the back of the monitor. You can see we have three USB-A ports, we have a FireWire 800 port, an additional downstream Thunderbolt port, and then a gigabit ethernet port. Now, let's go ahead and turn to the Mac Studio, also a Thunderbolt display. With the Studio display, Apple still uses Thunderbolt, but it simplified things a bit. The cable is now detachable, so you can always switch it, replace it, anything like that, including swapping it out for a longer one. Apple does include a standard Thunderbolt 3 cable in the box, and as an added bonus, it's nylon, braided nylon cable for increased durability. And you don't need two different cables, one for MagSafe and one for power, all of it's cabled or handled purely by Thunderbolt. And you can get up to 96 watts of power delivered from the studio display on the latest Macs. And there are three downstream USB-C ports that are all capable of handling up to 10 gigabits per second of data. Both of these monitors have built-in webcams. Apple says the Thunderbolt display has a built-in FaceTime HD camera, and the studio display has a 12 megapixel camera. Now, since this one is a 12 megapixel camera with a 122 degree field of view, Apple has other features added to it, including the ability to use center stage. It's able to zoom in on your face and follow you around and move with you as you're on FaceTime or other video calls. It's really cool, but the quality has been a little bit lacking. Either way, you can see the improvement and the difference between the new studio display and Apple's old FaceTime HD camera in the Thunderbolt display. The Thunderbolt display has one microphone built in and it's right here at the top, whereas the studio display actually has three microphones built in. There's one located on the back and the others are hidden throughout the monitor. And since there are three studio quality microphones in that studio display, Apple is able to use them for things like voice isolation. So it's able to block a little bit of that external noise and emphasize your voice when you're taking a call. Both these monitors have built in speakers. Apple included a 2.1 stereo system inside of the old Thunderbolt display. And the new studio display, which is impressively a lot thinner, Apple has a six speaker array, including two sets of force canceling woofers 
and two additional tweeters to provide the mids and the highs. Plus, Apple has enabled 3D spatial audio on the studio display. Now, while it isn't as impressive as using a dedicated set of AirPods or a Dolby Atmos system, it does a pretty good job of making the sound come like it's all around you. Both of these displays have built-in stands. On the Apple Thunderbolt display, you can swap that out with a VESA adapter kit. So it's an extra add-on, but you can take off that built-in stand and swap it for a VESA mount and attach it to any VESA arms or mounts that you may have. With the studio display, Apple offers two different options for stands. There's a basic tilting one that's similar to the Thunderbolt display where it just tilts, but there's also this one here that I've got, which is the height adjustable stand. So easily just a finger, you can go ahead and raise up the display, lower it back down. It makes the display feel almost weightless. It's honestly a very cool effect and I really like this stand. Though this stand is an upcharge compared to the built-in tilting one. Now, if you don't need a height adjustable stand or even the uh, tilting one, you can get a VESA option included for free. So you can just get a VESA one out of the box, but it won't include the stand. It'll just include the VESA adapter. That said, if you do pick up an Apple Studio Display and later down the road you decide you want to add the VESA mount, you can take it to an Apple store and they can swap it for you. Both of these displays are pretty cool for their time. I love the Thunderbolt display and it's still a pretty awesome and good looking monitor. And the Studio Display is pretty awesome as well, though people do think it's a little on the expensive side. But Apple did bake in a couple additional features that we don't have here in the Thunderbolt display. To start off with, it supports Siri hands-free. So for things like desktop computers or Macs if you have them closed in clamshell mode and they're not always listening, you can summon Apple's Assistant just by using your voice. Say those two magical key phrases and Siri will spring to life. The Studio Display also supports the P3 wide color gamut, multiple color reference modes, and there is an optional nano textured glass option that is great at cutting down reflections. I brought both here into my studio and I was really debating if I wanted to keep the one with the nano textured glass, but I opted just for the regular glass and instead spent the money on the height adjustable stand because I preferred that more than the nano texture purely because in my studio, I don't have glares on my monitor. I have things set up so I don't have any harsh lights hitting my display. If you are in a bright lighting situation where there are glares that are an issue, that nano texture can be life-saving. So let's hear it. What do you guys think? I love Apple's displays. They've done such an amazing job with them. I understand they're expensive, but for a lot of people, they're absolutely worth it. I use this Thunderbolt display well past when I should have, when this resolution was not high enough quality. And when I started finally working on 4K video work, it became too much uh, and I needed a higher resolution display. So I switched to a bunch of third party options before finally landing on the new studio displays. And it feels like going back home with a monitor that was made for my Mac. Plus it looks great and it works great at the same time. Let me know what you guys think. How did Apple do in its evolution from the Thunderbolt display to the studio display? Let me know over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And if you wanna buy one of the new studio displays, you know I've got some links for you down below in the description.